Hello world, I'm Chris Perillo, and you're watching another live edition of the Locker Gnome Daily Report, or TLDR for short, your daily dose of news, reviews, and answers that you can use. Like, what kind of news? Geeky news, nerdy news, any news that I find interesting, because this is me, after all, you're the person who wants to watch what it is that I have to say, and I'm sometimes only as good as the questions you ask. This is a Friday, so I like to do an AMA on Friday, and I do another AMA on Monday because we ask people every week to ask me anything. Yesterday was a special TLDR with my dad answering questions uh, from the open Facebook thread, and I would say that it was a, a fun AMA with dad yesterday in TLDR, so thank you for participating uh, with that. Uh, I intend on uh, doing even more for you over the weekend. Uh, the YouTube channels are kind of getting rebooted other than this one. The new uh, Geek Lifestyles channel is pretty much going to stay the same. But the classic YouTube channel, Chris Perillo, is uh, kind of getting uh, not a... What would you call it? It's rebooting, but not really rebooting. But it is rebooting. Uh, it's going to get the edited CPU episodes. We've done a few of them here in the Geek Lifestyles channel, and I felt that uh, they really deserved a, a lot more attention than they might have received in this channel. This channel is uh, really evolved into the long-form content, the Q&A, the TLDR, the daily patron hangouts, uh, the CPU behind the scenes. Uh, some of these are, are bonuses for patrons. Of course, the live geek outs are long-form as well, and we publish those live videos for everybody to watch. So we're doing a lot. And uh, we're doing our best to accommodate different parts of our community, including the Perilla Vlogs. They're not going to stop at 999. That was uploaded today. Tomorrow is the first official video that we're posting, or at least the first official vlog we're posting to the Perillo Vlogs YouTube channel. We have that username uh, on YouTube now, Perillo Vlogs. Although it's different uh, for YouTube to handle usernames now, uh, they have a different uh, system or setup. So you actually have to go to Waxy Wack. Perillo Vlogs after YouTube.com or just follow us on Twitter at Perillo Vlogs and we've got the link there. PerilloVlogs.com resolves to a Tumblr that you can follow. So Perillo Vlogs are not dying, CPU's not dying, and certainly a lot of the long-form content that I do for you on a daily basis is not dying. Today seems to be the 22nd of January. Is this the date that was behind me? No, it was not. It was actually the 23rd of January. So let me see here. i got to flip the cube appropriately. Move the two there. This is a perpetual calendar. Look at that. It is now January 23rd, according to this Darth Vader statuette. This is a replacement. I ordered one using uh, some of my Amazon gift cards, courtesy of go.tagjag.com slash free apps and go.tagjag.com slash free points. But what I received was kind of damaged. It, the, the helmet on Vader was askew. Uh, the chips, uh, or I guess the uh, corners were chipped here around where the cubes would be accommodated. I contacted the seller. And they sent out a new one, which is kind of nice. And then, of course, you could also flip the months as the months go by. Vader kind of goes back, so I've got other bars for the other months back there. And now I know it is January 23rd. I'll be sure to put a link to where you can get this for yourself in this video's description. Hopefully yours will turn out well as well. Starting with the patron questions, Kimberly John asks, Okay, in a race between the Enterprise and the Millennium Falcon, who do you think would win in a warp speed race? Matt's been arguing with her about this. Ha <laughs> ha, he says the Enterprise, I say the Millennium Falcon, and I get warp speed is one speed, but who do you think could hold it longer to win? I am actually going to say something kind of bold for me. I'm going to give it to the Enterprise. I am. Yeah. Fast. Very fast. We don't really know. Uh, time is never really laid out, uh, for at least within the universe of Star Wars, which is more fantasy, Star Trek being more sci-fi. I'm going to give it to uh, the Enterprise. And, and I don't think that's like a pity vote at all. I, I think reasonably the Enterprise was equipped to be a ship to be able to handle higher speeds. The Falcon, it works. But, you know, it, it, certainly I'm not slagging the Corellians for how they assemble their ships. Uh, and it's, it's, it's a workable system. But let's face it, it is probably not the top-of-the-line system that one might have been able to pick up in that day and age in a galaxy far, far away a long time ago. I'm going to give it to the Enterprise. I can't believe I just said that. Sorry, uh, Kimberly. Uh, I am going to give this one to Matt. Barry asks, A friend of mine has just moved to Seattle. Is there any local slang he should be familiar with? Well, there's something called a Seattle Freeze. This is not something you drink or order. Um... It's something where, uh, a scenario where you're trying to, you know, fit in, find new friends. 
it's difficult to find new friends in Seattle. Um, it's not that we intentionally freeze people out. It's just that we're relatively introverted and, and we have our cliques and groups of people that we like hanging out with and we, we don't like expanding our social circles all that often. So the Seattle freeze is a real thing. Uh, don't ever expect to uh, to to be with me for for uh, you know any, any private capacity because I I lead the Seattle freeze I think I'm not a, a big fan of meeting a lot of people apart from events that you know I might coordinate. In fact, today we were on site for uh, this year's Vlogger Fair. We, uh, we believe we found a place for it, and then this year's Gnome Dex as we're rebooting that event uh, for geeks and nerds who publish videos or enjoy geeks and nerds on YouTube. We're going to have two separate events this year for YouTubers. So. I like events and meeting people at events, but generally speaking, I'm not the type of person that uh, goes out and uh, finds new friends or needs to find new friends. I'm fine with internet friends, personally. Dick's is another Seattle institution, not to be confused with Spotted Dick. That is something I tried yesterday for the first time. Yes, it was recorded. It is a CPU episode. Uh, patrons can see the behind the scenes. Uh, someone left the dick out on the counter last night and avoid all the spots. So I don't know if that's uh, something that they should do, but apparently people who are here right now in my home do not like the Spotteds as much as they like the Dicks. Now, I like Dicks as a, a Seattle burger, one of my favorite fast food-ish kinds of burgers, although calling it fast food is really a, a bit disingenuous. It's, uh, it's good, it's fast, uh, it's fresh, it's clean, and it's delicious. Oh, delicious. I love Dicks. Love them. Ah, so uh, that's a term you might be familiar with or need to be familiar with. So if someone says, oh, you got to go get yourself some dicks, that's what they're talking about, most likely. Of course, you never really know because it is Seattle. So explore the region, have fun, uh, you know, just uh, participate in social and you'll see kind of what's happening. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll eventually fit in so long as you don't mind not fitting in because I don't think anybody in Seattle is normal. Normal is something that I don't think I've ever been, which is probably why I enjoy Seattle so much. Mitchell C. McClendon asks, Hello, Chris, with the recent preview of Windows 10, what are some of the differences you'll be looking for? We all know that Windows 8 did not do well, especially with those in Enterprise, not to be confused with THE Enterprise, uh, and government agencies. They did not like it at all. Do you think this will change with Windows 10? Thanks. I think it will change, yes, but I also don't think that... Enterprise or government agencies, any anybody who's liked how Windows has looked since Windows 95, I don't think they're going to like it anymore because it's really a, an amalgamation of the UI of Windows 8 with the UX of Windows 7, kind of. Uh, you've got the functionality there, but it's going to look different. I never minded the Windows 8 UI. I had a big problem with the Windows 8 UX. Big, big, big difference. And if you're talking to someone who doesn't understand the difference between the two, they should not be giving you their opinions about UI or UX. UI is user interface. It's how something looks. Uh, a UX is the user experience, or it's how something works. And the best is when you have a good UI mixed with a good UX. Then you have gold. Well, not physical gold, obviously. Otherwise, people would be spinning up operating systems like you wouldn't believe. I think that... Windows 10 is an absolute upgrade uh, from Windows 7 and Windows 8 and even Vista to a large degree. And I, I, it's another reason why I think Microsoft's giving the OS update out for free, at least for the first year, although I'd recommend that they you know keep that ad infinitum. I think that's going to move the numbers forward for them. I think it's a good marketing approach. I think it's good for users. But it's still going to be different. And, and I, I don't know if a lot of Windows users want different for Windows. I don't think Windows users, the average Windows user, at this stage uh, needs what Windows 10 might be able to provide from a user interface standpoint. Even though I'm looking forward to it, uh, I'm more excited about Windows 10 than I was about 7, um, it, it, and I'm more excited than I certainly was about 8. I wasn't a fan of Vista. I wasn't a fan of 8. Uh, but I think that they're making the right moves in terms of how they're implementing uh, the user experience strategies within Windows 10 from a distance. Haven't used it yet. We'll be trying it for the first time next week, and I plan on recording a video with my dad using Windows 10 for the first time when they update the build for Insiders next week. I'll be putting it on a Surface Pro 3. 
So I, I hope to give him a good experience. I don't think that video is going to go viral like the, the one that he did with the Windows 8 Consumer Preview. But I, I hope to, uh, to uh, you know, uh, run it through its paces. And uh, I think Microsoft's making the right moves with it. But I don't think it's going to be enough to move people away from what they already have, apart from security reasons. Because enterprise may not care about speed. Government agencies may not care about speed. <laughs> That's sometimes painfully obvious. Uh, when you're dealing with legacy systems, you're dealing with a lot of complexity. It's not as easy for groups to move forward when upgrading software. It's easier for individuals to move forward or even small teams. I think the uh, uh, the differences for them, it's really going to have to be in how well Windows 10 accommodates the idea of BYOD or bring your own devices, which I think is a good strategy for enterprise or even government agencies to adopt as long as security is in place. Uh, people probably have their own smartphones that they're bringing in or maybe even their tablets. And chances are those smartphones or tablets are not running a Windows platform. They're not likely running Windows 8 or Windows Phone 8.1 or even uh, um, Windows 10 compatibility uh, would be even a possibility for the phones they're using. Likely they're using an Android device, BlackBerry to a, uh, for a small segment of the marketplace, and then, uh, of course, iOS, the uh, one of the juggernauts, at least as far as one single vendor is concerned. Uh, I think iOS is a good competitor for in the marketplace of OS vendors for mobile platforms, iOS might compare favorably to Samsung because Samsung had their foothold. Of course, they, they've kind of, that's changed in the Android game uh, recently with Samsung kind of get, getting pushed into the middle, uh, really being outlapped by a lot more affordable uh, Android device vendors from the bottom up. So I, I think that uh, it's, it's really a question of management beyond the ability to manage other Microsoft devices. And if Windows 10 does a better job with managing BYOD scenarios, I think then you're going to see a faster uh, adoption by enterprise and agencies long, uh, larger than an individual. Mitchell C. McClendon asks, I know that you use Google Docs as your main office suite. Well, it's a primary. And I use other office suites as well. Although, oh, man, I got to tell you, I've run into so many frustrations. So give me a second here. I got to show you this. I'm trying to figure out how to solve this problem, and maybe someone out there can help me. I, I can't. I'm, I'm having a problem, believe it or not. If people, I, hey, I run into software problems all the time. So here's a, a suite, uh, my office suite of uh, apps on iOS here on my phone. I'm sorry. I, here, let me adjust the brightness a bit. It might help instead of me just tilting the phone like that. There we go. Okay, that should help. So here I have all the office apps, and this is what it is. So PowerPoint started to download an update, and then it froze. And I cannot get the app update to install. If I try to delete the app, it, it shows a prompt saying, uh, quote, unquote, there's no app name. It's just, quote, quote, uh, cannot be deleted. And like, I can't, or it says it'd be deleted, but all the data would be deleted. But it's like the app and its icon is not associated with the app that it's downloading. So when I try to re-download it, it, this is where it gets stuck. It always gets stuck specifically at that part, the pie chart in the, uh, or pie graph or whatever you would call that, that pie symbol where it's updating the, uh, the app. And then it just restarts and it restarts and it restarts and I can't delete the app. And I try re-downloading and I've tried rebooting the phone and I cannot get past this point. It's always installing or it's always loading. I can't remove, I can't delete the app. I can't re-download the app. No matter what I do, I cannot eliminate this. And I've been racking my brain trying to figure out how to do it. I do not blame Microsoft. I blame Apple. This is an iOS problem. Very clearly, this is an iOS problem. Uh, so uh, I need to find a solution. I really do. And I think the solution is going to be reinstall iOS. Oh, that's a horrible solution. I hate that. That's like, that's like the answer, like, all you need to do is run Windows. That will solve your Linux problem. That, to me, is a jackass response. I hate when people say that. Okay, so anyway, back back to uh, Mitchell uh, C. McClendon's question. Have you ever used Apple's iWork? Yes, clearly, I have the apps. Uh, I know that it comes pre-installed on both Macs and iPads by Apple. Yes, I have. Uh, does it fare favorably? Uh, you know, I think that for a powerful office suite... That might be available on a variety of platforms. Microsoft is still the way to go. Uh, I think for a low, a low feature yet capable and beautiful Office suite, Apple's got it. Uh, for raw functionality and compatibility, I think you're looking at Google Docs. So each one of them has their benefits. And you know what? For the most part, they're all free anymore. At least on you know mobile devices like iOS uh, or you know uh, an iPad or an iPhone running iOS. 
Tommy NC 2010. Hey, Chris, just want to say, are you excited to switch over to the new channel? Kind of. Uh, will the old vlogs stay on the same channel, or will you upload them to the new channel? I think we talked about this in the Patreon Hangout uh, the other day. We did one with family vloggers in the uh, the new Perilla Vlogs channel. And I, I think they're going to stay in the old channel for a lot of different reasons. Uh, the old channel, the classic Chris Perillo channel, has been so many things over these years. It's never really been one thing. And even over a stretch of time, it may have been one thing, but it's been all over the place. You can look back in history and see I've done... So many random videos in that channel. Random, not just about one particular topic. It's been a variety show of sorts. It's been the only place that I would put things. Well, when I started the vlog, it got such amazing engagement and such amazing traction, and I made so many amazing connections with other people that it was the thing that I really wanted to do most. I really did. And I, I just realized that if I'm going to do it, it was time, right around Vlog 1000, to put the vlogs in their own channel. But I also don't want to eliminate the uh, the videos where they sit and as they sit in the old channel. My hope is that eventually what YouTube could make possible is for me to reassign the videos and the URLs to a different channel. Then I would quote unquote move the videos, but I don't want to eliminate links. I don't want to eliminate comments. I don't want to eliminate ratings. I don't want to eliminate any of that. So they will likely stay in the old channel one, or I guess the prequel all the way through 999 and the other vlogs are, are going to be going in the Perlo Vlogs channel. Uh, outright starting uh, tomorrow vlog 1000 tomorrow unbelievable uh i'm excited uh, it's a bittersweet kind of uh excitement though because i believe that the most personal thing i've ever done for my personal channel has been the vlogs um and separating them for the other content it made sense i don't know if i had made the same decision because now if someone stumbles upon the vlog and sees it and likes it, they'll they'll want to subscribe to get the vlogs, but they'll find that the vlogs are in another channel, but they'll see that I'm doing other videos in the classic channel. So potentially it's a, it's, it's a way of picking up new, uh, new supporters, honestly. Uh, like Kimberly, uh, she found out about this world of mine because she uh, saw the vlog where Diana watched Star Wars for the first time because of how I titled it, you know, How to Throw a Star Wars Party. And I'll still be doing that with the vlogs, but she found out and became a patron and supported all this other stuff that I'm doing, this world of geekery, because uh, she appreciated that. So, there, as much as I, the, the, the organization side of me appreciates having everything in one place, it's just not how it worked out. Um, and I'm excited because I'm interested in seeing how this works. So now, and I tried to talk through this in the vlog, I guess it wasn't a vlog, a video that I recorded uh, uh, and then posted in the Classic Channel warning people what was about to happen. You know, we've got so many... Uh, amazing opportunities and trying to organize them in the best way possible sometimes can be a challenge. So now in this channel, uh, if you're watching, you may be listening to the podcast version of this, but in the Geek Lifestyles YouTube channel, it is now set aside for most of the long form content. Anything long form is going to go into this channel. This is where it's going in this channel. Long form is live and long form would be like a Q&A that might be 10 minutes long. That's long form. It's not edited. It's live. Uh, the the, the Q&A videos, TLDR, very, very long form. Uh, the Geek Outs, very, very long form. The CPU behind the scenes, obviously very long form. Uh, you know, anything that might be a long form type of video, a discussion point, a hangout, anything is going to likely be in this channel if it's related to, you know, a tech topic, absolutely, or anything geeky uh, in general uh, that I might want to talk about, like, you know, the Darth Vader calendar thing or this other Darth Vader thing that I've been ants, ants, been more than ants, I've been antsy to uh, look at. This is from the art of Disney theme parks. By the way, Disney's Jobs Twitter feed started following me the other day on Twitter, and I said uh, to them, I said, you know, uh, thank you for following me. I would like a career in Star Wars, please. There's the certificate of authenticity. And I am going to take this out of the box and display it because it is a collectible. Uh, and I believe it's some kind of uh, vessel in which could be held uh, items. You can do pencil holders. There's uh, there's the Vader sculpt. Beautiful sculpt. Uh, feels like a very heavy type of material. It's almost like uh, the prototype Vader that Ralph McQuarrie had sketched. That's the design there. Beautiful, beautiful piece of work. Ah, that is breathtaking. Oh, beautiful. Okay, you're going to go right there for now. Um, so I might talk about that in Geek Lifestyles, but... 
I might also, t you know, in, in, if I'm doing like a CPU video and I want to talk about some recent stuff that I picked up, this may be part of it. You know, geeky objects for my desk that I picked up or, you know, uh, geeky ways of staying, you know, keeping up to date on your, your desktop. I might pull in that Vader. Geeky way, and then it might be another product and another product, like a little roundup of three or, you know, interesting ways to hold your pencils on your desk. And I'd say, well, I guess you couldn't hold the pencils if you put the helmet back on, but... You know, so these would be in edited videos, but also potentially in TLDR as I'm, I'm talking about them long form. Perilla Vlogs obviously go in the Perilla Vlogs channel, and uh, any kind of uh, family vlog or hangouts will likely go into that channel, even though they are long form. It's still relevant to the audience. And then uh, uh, the classic Chris Perillo channel is pretty much only going to get edited videos in some way, shape, or form. Most of them, it's going to be a variety, though. It really is. So one day I might want to talk about, you know, the ways that, you know, <clears throat> five things I learned in being a father or a new father, or the next day it may be retro tech, and another day maybe one of my favorite games is, uh, that I played when I was a kid, uh, you know, or or the next day it may be um, a new toy that I got, or, you know, so it's, it's, it's all over the map. Uh, it's a variety show, and that's the best way to accommodate the classic channel. So I'm excited to see if we reboot the classic channel to be edited videos that are variety that still accommodate me, because I'm Chris Perillo, multifaceted, technology is like 5% of my life, uh, it's it's uh, it's a possibility of getting deeper engagement on each channel. Pearl of Vlogs now got their own stuff. Geek Lifestyle is long-form stuff. So there's nothing saying you couldn't subscribe to all three. In fact, that's the best option. That's what I'd recommend. So it's that's what I'm excited about, uh, th those changes coming down the pike. Steve Shanine. Hey, Chris, now that the Windows 10 event is over with, all I can say is that they're going the right direction, yet they ruined it with keeping some Metro UI elements. Really? You think so? I don't. Relying on, Cort relying on Cortana for too many things. Copying Apple in way too many areas. Really, Steve? I disagree. Wholeheartedly. I think the Cortana integration was genius. From what I saw in the demo, I think that's a huge selling point for Windows 10. In a day and age when we're used to Google and saying, hey, Google, or hey, Siri, or whatever it happens, okay, Google. Okay, Google. Did anybody's phones go plonk? Okay, how about this? Hey, Siri. See, my phone's not plugged in. Ah. So, uh, or I'm not, I don't have Google Chrome open. Uh, I win. Uh, the, uh, uh, you know, I think we're getting used to that kind of input. And I think the way that Microsoft, and I mentioned this in the TLDR edition where I pretty much covered Microsoft the other day, it was interesting to see how they integrated uh, Cortana with Project Spartan. I'm also very excited. I, I can't believe this. I was even mentioning this to my dad. HoloLens. So cool. From a, from a distance, it looks so cool. It really does. I have not been excited about a new piece of tech in the longest time. I mean, because it's, it's another smartphone, it's another tablet. They're nice, they're great, new upgrades, better quality. But something different is what I've been longing for. And I think that, uh, you know, what they've got there with HoloLens is a step in the right direction. I, I don't know how usable it is. Obviously, I've not got my head on with it. I keep looking for someone who works there. I'm like, please, please, please. I know what I said about Windows 8, but I was right. And you proved me right. Please do not hate me. I do love Microsoft. I do. If I didn't, do you think I would sit there and say the things that I've said to stop them from trying to release Windows 8 the way they did? Or what I'm saying about Windows 10 taking a step in the right direction. This isn't about hate. This isn't about, you know, being a fan of one platform or another. I'm an advocate for the user. Period. End of story. That's where it begins and ends. This is why it's difficult for me to uh, get pulled into an argument uh, about platform wars. I don't care. I'm a user advocate. I don't care. I believe in the user. I fight for the user. That's my perspective. That's why you're going to hear me talk, uh, you know, when people are asking about Windows 10, I'm not going to geek out over the latest hardware, this, that, or the other thing. I'm going to tell you, well, how's it going to work? How, how, is, how is someone going to upgrade? How is this going to happen? You know, I think through those scenarios and try to talk through those scenarios. That's what gets me excited. The deeper analysis, the deeper insight. That's what I love. I'm not looking for the low-hanging fruit. Anyway, I think they're t taking the step in the right direction. I cannot express enough how much I like the Metro UI or the modern UI, whatever they renamed it or whatever they're going with uh, this month, uh, or Cortana integration. I think they're, they're doing the right things there, Steve. Uh, so he says, do you like the idea, he, he further goes and says, do you like the idea of being one OS to rule them all, and what do you think about the Microsoft Lens project? Okay, I mentioned that. And the Surface Hub. Well, I didn't mention much about the Surface Hub, but I think Surface Hub is largely for business and enterprise, definitely not for consumers. So I didn't want to dive too deeply into that even when I talked about uh, some of these things from the announcements the other day. Uh, finally, all in all, do you think Windows 10 is enough of an improvement that you might use it? Well, I'd use it, yeah. As a primary device uh, or an OS, 
that might be difficult because I'm now tied into Google's ecosystem, I'm now tied into Apple's ecosystem, and I'm now tied into Microsoft's ecosystem. And I can't be tied into all of them from any other platform apart from Apple's. It's the way it works right now. There's more Microsoft software available for OS X than there is Apple software available for uh, uh, Windows. But again, let me pull out the glowing stick of truth. See, it's glowing. Can you see it? Flashing colors. Apple is a vertical player. Microsoft and Google are horizontal players, so they're not going to do the same thing. And anybody who says they need to release more software for the other platforms has no idea what the hell they're talking about and does not belong in any kind of intelligent thread discussing the problems. If there are perceived problems because Apple is a vertical player and Google and Microsoft are horizontal players, and I wish I could stop talking about this, but unfortunately I can't, because every time I bring up the topic, there's always some moron in the comment thread who doesn't understand how to use his critical thinking skills or hers, to be able to apply a decent conversation to the conversation. I don't mind the idea of one OS to rule them all. I think it's a good idea, the way that Microsoft may have implemented it, such that, like on the Surface, when you don't have the keyboard attached, uh, it's, it, it has a different usability paradigm. But once you attach the keyboard, the OS or the system is aware that, hey, you just attached a different input device. Do you want us to kind of shift functionality? Smart. Very, very smart. Uh, they, they've kind of taken a step forward with uh, Windows 10 on the phone. I, I don't know is the answer. I think it's possible the way they're approaching it. I haven't seen implementation enough to tell you. All I know is that if they keep in mind that modality for usability is equally as important as anything else, if not the most important, without good usability, I think, honestly, you have a crappy device. And, I, and that's, I'm not saying that they have that at all. I'm just saying that... Uh, it, so much is tied into that user experience. It's all about the experience, baby. So uh, it's it's possible that even if it's one OS, if the OS dynamically assigns different usability depending on how that person is using it, that's great. If it's one app store to rule them all, that's fine because they're getting used to people using the same system or the same software in a, a certain amount of ways without necessarily having to retrain themselves. And I think that is the right way to go. Uh, I would not say that Apple needs to step the right direction. <laughs> I think App, uh, Microsoft is schooling Apple in terms of design. Um, there are certain things about uh, the Windows 10 UI that I don't like, but for the most part, I like the Windows UI in terms of Windows 10. Even I even like Windows 8's uh, modern UI a lot. It was the UX that threw me off. Uh, so I think it's possible if Microsoft implements and, and uh, bears in mind the need uh, for usability to shift with uh, modality. Uh, I'm sorry, I had to take a take a breath here. Earl Green asks, Hulu is tapping talent for YouTube's next for its next original TV series. Thoughts? It's great. That's pretty cool. Uh, I'm glad they're tapping talent for YouTube. I think that YouTube is the repository for everything that is the future of entertainment today. No doubt, no doubt about it. I think YouTube's going to be around for the foreseeable future. I think it's where people go at this point to be discovered uh, because the, the the network is there. I think that may diminish over time. Uh, but even, you know, keeping in mind that, you know, Jedi at some point, she's going to be old enough to get on social. YouTube was a phenomenon as I was an adult, but she's going to grow up with it. And that's going to be her TV. And that is going to be her series of celebrity. And I, I need to, I, I would be remiss if I didn't recognize that today and understand why that's valuable. So I have an opportunity to really raise her with an understanding of how a lot of these things might work from my perspective, uh, such that she could be better prepared to possibly do her own thing. I mean, I don't think Jedi's going to grow up and necessarily do the same thing I did. I would be shocked if she was interested in the same things I was. I really will. I really would be surprised if she was interested in half the things I was interested in. I think she'll be interested in some, certainly, and maybe appreciate it at a completely different level, which would be great, uh, but it, it's her life, and it, you know, I, I want to be able to show her how to use the technology to be able to achieve her dreams. That's how I love technology. I don't love it for the sake of it being technology. I don't care. It, it, to me, you ask me what kind of camera lens it is, and I, I'll tell you. It's a camera lens that helps me broadcast a video. It says... Um, 0.7x wide. I don't know what that means. And I don't care. I don't care. Technology is a means to an end for me. It's all. That's it. That's why I can't be the kind of geek that I think some people think I am. And I'm not. If you're looking for the ultimate, you know, nerd in tech, I am not it. Not it. Not it. Not it. Can I? I'm not it. Not it. Not it. I am not the ultimate tech nerd. I am not the ultimate geek at all in relation to tech 
Tech is just a, a fraction of my life, but tech enables so many amazing experiences. That is why I love tech. Because it enables it. Okay, I think you got the point. I should have. I had the stick there and I didn't use a stick. All right, moving on. Adam Wallace asks, Chris, I know you use Warby Parker. Yes, I did. And he even used my affiliate link there. There we go. WarbyParker.com slash Locker Gnome. This is what I've been wearing uh, pretty much since people said they didn't like the glasses that I choose to spend, or I, I spent my own money on that I never wear. Uh, he says, but what's the name of your frame you're wearing right now? What type of glasses does your dad have? I have no idea about my dad, but these glasses are China. That can't be right. What the hell? Come on. Hang on. Hang on. Oh, 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 got it. Got it. Got it. Sibley? Sibley. There we go, Sibley. Uh, and believe it or not, even though I sent the prescription in by the web, by way of the web, I found these to be more comfortable uh, with what I needed glasses for than the ones that I had at by going to the doctor twice to get a prescription. I'm just in between. I can't see things far away at all. And seeing things up close requires me to put my glasses down to the end of my nose, or you've seen me do it before from looking at a screen up close, uh, peer over my glasses. And I've been doing that for my entire life. My eyes are changing, though. So there's the answer to the question, Adam. Thanks again uh, for asking. Brian H. asks, you don't really strike me as a car guy. Well, it's a, you're right. I'm not. <laughs> a car, to me, it's a means to an end. It's a tool to get me from point A to point B. I love tech in the car for the experiences that it enables. I love the tech in my car. I don't love the car. Does that make sense? I, I, I'm, maybe I'm, I'm crazy that way. But if you had to pick one classic car, pre-1990, if you prefer, what would it be and why? Could, it could be a show car or for daily use. Uh, I'm going to go with Kit. Yeah. I think that was short for Night Industries 2000. That would be my car. That is definitely a classic car, pre-1990. Kit was the ultimate car right there. Tony asks, question number 11. It seems to me that a lot of tech nowadays just provides you with unimportant information that isn't completely necessary and just seems to be another medium for consumers to spend more money. For example, augmented reality with menus for restaurants available and one-click purchases. With that said, do you find the population in general today to be gradually becoming dumber and lazier when you and I were growing up? Uh, Tony, that is an amazing question. I, I don't know if we're dumber, uh, necessarily. I think a lot of people have offset uh, the response, personal responsibility, uh, you know, and, and projected their own wants, needs, and desires onto other people. And it's, it's the people have become not more rude, but I think more self-centered, uh, and, and not just selfish, just self-centered, and not recognizing when you're interacting with other people through technology, you're still interacting with other people. Uh, in, in media sometimes I think has, has removed people's abilities to need to feel that they need to think for themselves. I think critical thinking in these skills is so important. I think math skills is important to learn, but certainly I've been, uh, you know, just as happy to be able to use smarter maps. Uh, you know, I, I cannot go back to a, a printed map, even if I tried, uh, I have at points in the past, of course. Um, th there's a lot of gimmickiness that comes along with technology, but a lot of technology can can uh, improve workflow, and it, it's iterative. It's not, you know, these gigantic leaps necessarily. 20 years from now, we're going to look back on the things that we're doing today, and one, I know Jedi, when she turns 21, she's going to just wonder how the hell we did it. It's just the way it goes. That's how it evolves. 20 years from now, we're probably going to have self-driving cars. I mean, we have them now, self-driving cars, but uh, they'll likely be uh, overruling the road, which is fine by me. should be safer. So I don't think people are dumber and lazier. I just think that uh, they've put too much trust in technology without going through an internal filter first. Tech is not to be trusted. Don't trust tech. Don't. Technology is not to be trusted. Um, and I think a lot of people have offset or off-put their uh, uh, willingness to trust in, in the state of, oh, it's technology, it's better, it's faster, it's better than what I had before, therefore it's it's better. And, and I, I wouldn't go that far. I, a tech, technology, for as many good things as it enables, can also destroy, can also damage. I trust tech uh, as far as I can understand it and also understand its weaknesses and shortcomings. And I am not willing to fork over my entire life to systems that I don't necessarily know everything about. 
I mean, there's only so much you can do because uh, even if you've drawn that line, that doesn't mean that someone you're interoperating with, a company, a business, a brand, another person, is going to have that same threshold. And I think that's where it requires thinking, individuals to think. This stems from the same problem of someone telling me, you're boring. That's BS. You're bored. There's a difference in responsibility. Take responsibility, man. If you don't like what you see or what you hear, it's your responsibility. Move on. That person isn't necessarily boring. You're bored. There's a difference. A massive difference. Take responsibility for being bored. Don't accuse someone of being boring. You might believe, oh, they're boring, but they're boring you. So you can easily say, they're boring me. You don't throw it onto somebody else. That's the worst thing you could possibly do. Relationship 101, people. If you ever wondered why you're, you, you had problems in relationships, if you did, or before you, you fall into this trap in the future with a relationship, here's a little advice coming from uh, your good old virtual Chris. <sighs> uncle Chris. I'll be your virtual Uncle Chris. If you think something, say you think something. I think you're wrong, not you're wrong, unless you know they're definitively, they're definitively wrong. If it's a, 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 a situation where you're bored, then be accurate in what you say. Don't say you're boring, because that, that, that puts a responsibility on someone else and they, they weren't in control of it. Now, if you say you're boring me, that's an accurate statement. I couldn't argue with that. I'm boring you. Again, not my responsibility. Clarity of communication is just so crucial. It's so crucial. And I think technology has given people an excuse to be really bad communicators. Twitter's the perfect place to tell the world what you're thinking before you've had a chance to think about it. Question number 12. Could you please give some examples of why you prefer Google Docs or Microsoft's Word or OneDrive or Apple's iteration or any other cloud-based document creator? I do not have answers to that question. Sorry. Because they all have different... Um, I kind of referred to it earlier. They have different uh, benefits and drawbacks. John Whitaker. Hi, Chris. I haven't been there. Oh, don't worry. In just some time. It's okay. I'm glad you're there still. Ask how you're doing and if you had a good Christmas. We did. We, it, was, it, was, it was a good one. Uh, one of the better ones I've ever had. Austin asks, Hey, Chris, I recently broke my wrist. Ugh, and now I find it hard to type things on my iPad. Any advice? Uh, learn voice recognition. Quickly. Uh, Paul Bulldock asks, Can music and ringtones be synced on a tablet iPad if they had iTunes on them? Uh, Paul, if you could figure that out, I think you've just become the next world uh, billionaire because I couldn't figure that out. I have ringtones that I can't get rid of. I'm like, I never want this ringtone again. I can't get rid of it. I've got one of me burping. I'm like, I really... Chris, why did you ever do this? I, I, I haven't figured out a way to do that. Edward Middleton asks, Do you know if Weird Al ever parodied a Beatles song? He did not. That I can assure you. Likely because of uh, getting permission. Paul McCartney didn't even want him to uh, parody uh, 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 Live or Let Die with Chicken Pot Pie as an official parody release uh, because uh, Paul McCartney's a vegetarian and it was about Chicken Pot Pie. So I'm guessing it'll never happen. Jan Stott, and I don't know if I pronounced your name right there, uh, but he says, Chris, if you could be in a Star Wars film, what character except Darth Vader would you like to be or would you like to play? I'd like to be an alien. I mean, with makeup and everything, you know, I'd, that'd be kind of neat. Like prosthetics on my face and everything. That'd be neat. Because then I'd be able to have a collectible character of myself. Like, it's me! I was that character in the movie! Ah! Like I said, I tweeted to the Disney Jobs Twitter account and said, give me a career in Star Wars. Thank you. I said thank you. They haven't responded yet. Hashtag shock. Adam Toms asks, is there anywhere in the world that you've yet to visit or that you would like to? <sighs> no, I'm good. Uh, Mark Heider asks, do you turn off your computer at night? Nope, haven't done that in eons. Uh, you know, of course I have everything set up on passwords and stuff and the power, you know, automatically shuts down at a certain time, but I haven't felt the need to uh, turn off the computer in decades. That's just me. It's a lifelong argument. I'm sure it's like asking, do, do I turn off my phone at night? No, I don't. I just keep it plugged in. Keep it going. So uh, thank you, everybody, for tuning in uh, for this AMA. Thank you for everything that uh, you've done. Thank you for liking, commenting, sharing, subscribing to all of our YouTube channels and all of the Only One podcast that I'm doing right now. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm going to roll off into, I believe, a patron-only hangout. Uh, although I don't know... I, I, I got to check. Give me a second. Let me check. Because the problem is... Uh, we've had some issues with our team. There's some. Uh, uh, there's been uh, some changes. Uh, there, 
Liz is running into a few issues. John's running into a few issues. Nothing bad, uh, but I wanted to make sure that we had everybody that we needed to have. If not, we may have to uh, stall the uh, the hangout today. I'm going to wait to, to see if I see someone commenting in the Facebook thread um, because I don't want to tap anybody's time when I'm, I'm doing all this. But uh, there may be a patron hangout. There may not be. <laughs> Because I don't know if I'm the only one doing anything with my team right now. This is the value or the benefit of, of doing something live. And when you're on your own for production, for talent, for facilitation sometimes. Uh, so I'm going to call the ball and say there's not likely going to be a hangout today. Sorry, the team kind of got busy with things that were beyond their control. But as I said, stay tuned this weekend because we're uploading or sharing uh, and going public with uh, over 10 new CPU episodes in the Classic YouTube channel. The Home Office Tour is going live. Of course, by the time you, most people will hear this after it's live, the Home Office Tour for 2015 will have already gone live with patrons gotten a sneak uh, peek. Oh, Liz says we're okay. Okay, so I guess we are doing the Hangout. Okay, we're doing a Hangout. Woohoo! So, uh, expect changes all across the board with the uh, uh, the YouTube channels. Uh, I think I've, I've said just about everything I needed to say and then some. So, at this point, I'm going to leave you to your own devices.